Hello, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're gonna go through a quest called A Kingdom Divided. It is a fairly long quest, but uh, I'm gonna do my best to help you go through it. I've already completed it on my Iron Man, so I have all the notes needed in order to successfully guide you through this fairly long quest. Now, in order to start this quest, you're gonna need a couple of requirements. Firstly, let's talk about the quests. You're gonna have to have completed X marks the spot, the client of Karend, the queen of thieves, the depth of Despair, the Ascent of Arceus, the Forsaken Tower, Tale of the Righteous and Architectural Alliance. When it comes to skills that you will need in order to complete this quest, you will need 54 Agility, 52 Thieving, 52 Woodcutting, 50 Herblore, 42 Mining, 38 Crafting and 35 Magic. There are not that many items you are actually going to need in order to complete this quest. Now firstly you will need to obtain a Volcanic Sulfur. I will quickly show you a very quick video on how to get that, but all you need for that is a Pickaxe and a Slayer Helmet. If you do not have a Slayer Helmet, a face mask will also do just fine. Here I will very quickly show you how to obtain Volcanic Sulfur. You will need this later in the quest to combine with a Defense Potion. Teleport to Lovaken with your Xeric Talisman and teleport to Inferno. Run a little bit west and north and you will be here at Volcanic Sulfur Mine. Make sure you wear a Slayer Helmet or a face mask and you'll be able to mine yourself. Um, a sulfur. So you will be needing one of these later on and you will also need to obtain the dark essence block. In order to obtain that you are gonna once again need a pickaxe and a chisel and I will explain you how to do that part right now. And now to quickly show you how to get a dark essence block. This is going to be located a little bit east of the current altar place. If you have the fairy ring you can teleport with CIS to this configuration if you have unlocked it or well you're just gonna have to find your way here. You want to chip these dense runestones and once you're done chipping them you will obtain a dense essence block. You take this block to the altar uh, to basically charge it and that is the second untradeable item that you are going to need in this quest. So right here at the altar, click venerate and that will be the second item that you will require to have. Throughout this video you are going to need a defense potion, those three or four, you're also going to need to have a molten glass, you're gonna need a combat potion most likely with a one prayer potion and as much food as possible, I'll tell you when to take food when needed. You are also going to require a dragon axe and runes to cast a fire bolt spell, now you can do that with air runes, chaos runes and fire runes. I think all you need to do is cast one bolt but take a couple just to be extra safe. It is very highly recommended to have an antidote because we are going to be getting poisoned during this quest and also stamina potions because we will be running a lot. Also very very needed is Xerix Talisman. If you do not have Xerix Talisman you probably shouldn't do this quest, you will require it to teleport around a lot. I personally have it mounted in my house, so I'm taking a construction cape to teleport there, but if you don't have 99 construction, you can take a house teleport if you have it mounted in your house, or just bring the Xeric Talisman with you. It is also very very good to have Carrot's Memoirs with you, because once again we will be teleporting a lot, and if you have a Radha's Blessing to teleport to Mount Karulm, that will be helpful as well. On top of that, you want to have an ability to teleport to the Fairy Ring. I personally have Elite Diaries completed, but if you don't, you might require a Draymond Staff as well. Another thing we're going to be needing is a Games Necklace. Eight uses will be perfectly fine, but once again, if you have a Jewelry Box in your house, that is an alternative that you can take in order to go to Winterthod, which is where we'll need to go throughout the quest. You want to be able to teleport to the current right here in the center, I can do that once again with the teleports in my house, but you can also do it with a teleport on your regular spellbook if you have it unlocked. If not, find an alternative to get yourself to the center of Karend a couple of times when we have to do it. And lastly, a pretty important one is to have somewhat of a decent combat gear. I am personally taking an Abyssal Tentacle with Amulet of Torture, a Vernic Defender, all those expensive gear, but on my Iron Man all I had was a regular whip and full graceful and I went through the boss fights just fine. However, if you are a lower level, consider taking your best gear for combat, but you will also be able to pre-watch my boss fights and see exactly how they work, but they are not hard so do not worry, if you have some food, and the prayer potion, you will be fine. Obviously 43 prayer being extremely highly recommended. Alright, now that we got all the boring stuff out of the way, let's go ahead and begin with our beautiful new quest. 
Alright, let's begin. Throughout this quest guide, I will be using my house a lot, but obviously if you do not have uh, this little mounted stuff in your house, that is perfectly fine. You just find your own way to get to locations that I'm showing you. Now the quest start is going to be located right here in good old Kingstown, right next to Current Castle, and all we gotta do is speak to Martin Holt at the start. Now this is going to be a quick quest guide, therefore I'm actually going to be um, holding space a lot. So we're holding space, we're clicking 1 to start the quest. After this, we're gonna have to run to the castle. So um, once again, hold spacebar and then be ready to run um, west over here. And we're basically gonna have to find a Commander Fulor right now. If throughout this video I end up pronunciating the names wrong, I would like to sincerely apologize in advance. Um, but Captain Fulor is located right here on the bottom floor of the current castle. We're gonna speak to her and once again hold spacebar. And once she gives us an ability to press any keys, we're gonna click option number one and that's gonna get us into a cutscene. Also, I will be sipping on some water throughout this video because it's a long one. There's gonna be a lot of talking, so... Apologies if you do find that annoying. Uh, but yeah, now we are in the cutscene and we have Captain Guinea here with Thomas Laurie. After the cutscene, we're gonna have to search the house for different sorts of evidence and I'll tell you where everything is located as soon as we're out of the cutscene. Alright, the cutscene is finished. Hold spacebar, finish the conversation and run north. First off, we are going east and we're gonna search these cabinets. The middle cabinets should have a delivery confirmation, make sure you search that for that. But you know what, for the sake of this video, let's just quickly click all of it just to make sure there's nothing else. You can inspect the delivery confirmation, click spacebar and then run west. Search these shelves on the west side and you will find another in another book basically and then these shelves right here on the north side to find another order form uh, i'm also gonna search these shelves just in case and this table just in case but there shouldn't be anything there once again click them to make sure you go inspect them just like that after that we are gonna search this sink right here or hot tub, actually, apologies, uh, but there's nothing gonna be in there. These drawers right here should have an item. Let's inspect this receipt, and then let's search these drawers right next to bed for the bloody knife. Yep, that's same as my old ac other account, but just in case, we're gonna search everything. It takes literally a second, but there should be nothing else here aside from this desk where we get a current map, and there should be something in this wardrobe as well, I believe. There it is, and let's inspect this cultist robe. There are more stuff, so I'm just gonna eat my manta ray, someone is, uh, it is what it is. And I'm gonna climb this staircase, and there's gonna be just one more thing up here. And that's gonna be right here in the skeleton. So I'm gonna quickly search him for a bone. And uh, I'm just gonna quickly do this, perfect. Alright, so now we're gonna click every single item, just to make sure we have inspected everything. And I'm obviously holding spacebar as I do this. Just like so. And now we're gonna climb down this staircase and we're gonna speak to um, basically the commander on the bottom floor just outside this house. Let's speak to the commander. Uh, we're gonna say, I think I know where the counselor whatever has gone. And then we're gonna say anything we want. I don't actually think you need to go through this conversation. Basically, we gotta go and investigate right now. So, okay, after this, after we have all these items, we basically need to make our way to Lovacan. I'm personally using the Xeric Talisman to Inferno, but if you do not have that unlocked, I really don't recommend you to do this quest once again, but if you really are doing it, then just run there. So we are going to Inferno. As I said, I will be using my house throughout this, simply because that's where my Xeric Talisman is located, uh, but obviously you probably can just have it in the inventory and you can do these steps just a little bit faster. So right now we are basically running to the pub. We are running a little bit uh, east, a little bit south, and we are going straight to the pub, basically. In the pub, we are gonna have to speak to Fugi. Fudgy? Fugi? Not sure how to say his name. Alright, let's open the door, let's enter the pub, and let's speak to... Fuggy. And we're gonna say option... Uh... Um, we're gonna say option number three. Had you had any counselors here recently? And then we're gonna hold the spacebar. 
Apologies, I actually didn't write the correct answer there on my little spreadsheet. Uh, but we're gonna experience an earthquake. Later on, we're gonna figure out what exactly that is. And once again, I am holding spacebar. And I believe now if we quickly check the quest journal, we can go to the Vios, where Vios would be located. The best way to go there, in my opinion, is to reminisce the Caridat memoirs and go to Piscarilius. So now we're basically making our way to our very first boss fight. So if you need to, you can go ahead and... Uh, you can go ahead and basically get a little bit more supplies, but this boss fight is fairly easy. I'm actually surprised I still have all these items and no one took them away. I don't know at what point they take it away from you. Perhaps if I spoke all the options with the lady that we were just with, uh, this would have been done. I'm not 100% sure, actually. I think on the other account, I did all the quest dialogues and this was no longer here. But let's just experiment and let's speak to uh, Cabin Boy uh, right over here where Vios should be located. We're gonna say option number two, I'm looking for a counselor. And for this fight, I really just recommend you to pray melee and pray piety if you have it. Um, it's gonna be like a mini version of the Dragon Slayer boss, and you'll see what I mean with that as soon as we get into it. Basically, you dodge the little flames, you get to the melee range of the boss, and then you just smack it, basically. Uh, you might need a prayer potion for this, you might need a combat potion for this. I recommend you to watch this fight first before getting into it, just so you're not, like, scared or shaky or anything like that. I'll show you some decent ways to do it, but to be honest, even if you're completely shaky and completely scared, you can literally run through flames and eat the food, and you will be perfectly fine. Right, so, Judge of Yama is our very first boss fight of the video. Uh, she has a special attack where she kicks you away, just like that, we're gonna pray melee, and we're gonna dodge these little flames. I'm gonna use my combat potion, and now I'm gonna learn left, and I actually just tanked all of those flames, uh, because I'm bad at the game. Uh, and this bar right here is actually a little bit annoying, it's like right in the middle of a screen. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna smack this. Oh yeah, you see my inventory right now? It did get rid of all those items, so I was correct in saying that I think those items were not there uh, when I first did it. But yeah, we're just dodging these little flames right here. As best to our ability, once again, if you make a mistake, don't worry about it, just run to it, hit it, you'll be perfectly fine. Now this is my gear, um, my gear is pretty solid for this, but if you don't have this gear, do not worry. As you can see, this boss does not really hit hard. Right? Like, I, I got hit by a flame there, and look, we're perfectly fine, right? We take like 20 damage for being hit. That is basically one shark. Once again, we're sprinting through here. I'm not even gonna bother. Uh, maybe I should have bothered, actually. That was probably not a very strategic idea, so to say. Um, but yeah, we're gonna also put a little bit of a sound on. Or maybe not. I changed my mind. That's very loud. Um, Rune Light currently doesn't work because of this update, so I have to basically... Um, yeah play without sounds or it's very loud. Uh, but there we go, that's uh, your first fight of the of the little quest, right? Um, and this is, I'd say, a fairly easy one, right? I think that's safe to say it's not exactly hard. Took me like three manta rays to do, um, but that that's it. So once again, we're holding spacebar here. This is the first part of the quest completed. So now we're gonna have to find uh, Commander Fulor, uh, and she is gonna be located southwest behind the castle. Uh, fun fact, when I did this first, I needed like 30 minutes to find her. It was bad. Um, but yeah, so if you just run, oh, maybe if I open this door, I can just go south, and there she is. She's literally right here. Commander Fulor, we speak to her, and once again, we're holding spacebar. So we're gonna have to go kind of back and forth between her and Martin, which is our original guy that we spoke to at the start of the quest. So we are holding spacebar here. And as soon as this conversation ends, as I said, we're going straight to Martin. Now, I know that there is another boss fight later on in the quest, so when I have an opportunity, I'm also going to enter a bank to grab a little bit more food, because for the next fight, we will need a little bit more food, it's a little bit harder than this one. Uh, but I'll do that later on when the boss fight actually happens. So you don't need to do it right now, is what I'm trying to say. Anyways, make your way to Martin, he's located uh, east of the castle, and we're gonna speak to him and hold spacebar once again. Every now and then I recommend you to just check the little Kingdom Divided quest, just to make sure you're at the right part of the quest. Shout out to Exotab if he ever sees this video, he says he's a big fan. And I obviously will not be ig ignorant or arrogant, and I will say thank you, if I can quickly do that. 
perfect. And now we are going to have to go to the Arceus library. Perfect, it's correct. And as I said, I'm now going to my house and since I have the pool in my house, I'll quickly restore my stats there. So when it comes to Arceus, I will personally use the CIS in the fairy ring in my house. If you need to, you can bank, you can take your Draymond staff and find your way to here differently. You can also use the Karid memoirs and teleport to Arceus there. Um, uh, but yeah, basically find your way to Arceus library. It's literally the biggest building in Arceus, very easy to get to. I personally use CIS to get here and I think that's the best option, but if you have other options, feel free to use them. Now we're gonna speak to Arceo, right over here in the library and we're gonna click option number one. And as soon as we get teleported, we are going to pickpocket the Historia, the lady in the purple. We obtain a bluish key and now we search this display case that is located on the east wall, southeast wall, and we will obtain a new item called a Rose Diary. Go ahead and inspect it, click spacebar, and now um, we're basically gonna have to return to Martin at the start of the quest. I personally returned to him by teleporting to my house and using my portal to the Great Current. If you have other options to get here, do those instead. Once again, we are uh, making our way to Martin and we're gonna speak to him. So here I did a little mistake the first time around when I did it and I didn't speak to him twice. So you speak to him once, then you read his note and then you speak to him again. Oh, he actually automatically talks to you. But I'm gonna speak to him again just in case because I know the last time I did it, he fucked me over. Right, lovely. So now we need to go to Forthos Ruins. If you do not know where Forthos Ruins are located, I'm personally gonna use Xeric Talisman to a Glade teleport spot. Uh, but there are obviously, once again, other options. So I go right here, I teleport menu to Glade, and that's gonna be Hosidius. For this part, you're gonna need your axe, basically. I'm gonna make my way west and I'm gonna jump over the agility shortcut here. And that's how I'm gonna get to it. It is located right over here, this little dungeon sign. Um, that's where we're going right now. This part is going to be different for everyone that's doing this quest. Now I will very quickly explain how easy it is to actually find the solution. So we are gonna have to search four different stone piles and all we're gonna have to do is spell rose with the actual letters, right? Uh, it's all gonna make sense in just a second. Let's talk to Martin Holt. And let's select option four as soon as we have the ability to do so. There we go, I'll get searching. There are a couple of little stone piles located throughout this little dungeon. Let's search this one right here next to the west wall. And as you can see, O is six. O is six. Make sure you write this down somewhere or just remember it. O is six. For you, it's going to be different. O is going to be something else. For me, S is three. So I'll write that down on my other screen. S is three. Um, it's located just a little bit south of the last one. Then we're going to run a little bit east, a little bit south. And we're going to search this one right here in, the, in this little corner. And this one was R8. R is eight. I'm going to write that down. R is eight. And then just a little bit north. There's the last one. And E is 9. So E is 9. For me, spelling rose is 8639. For you, it's going to be different. Just spell rose with the letters. Um, over here on the northwestern side, you chop the vines in order to get in this little room. You can do that with any type of X and squeeze through. This is where the woodcutting requirements comes in. Right here on the east part of this wall, you can check the panel. Make sure you check it. And then you need to type in the combination. As I said earlier, for me, it's going to be 80, uh, actually 8639. Hope that's correct. There we go. We have unlocked the panel. And now we can read this little note again and check it once again. Check the, the quest log just to make sure everything is okay. And now we need to speak to Martin yet again. Speak to Martin right here outside. And now we'll say, um, all right, I'll see you soon. Option number four. Okay, checking the quest log. Now we need to find, now we need to go to another riddle. 
Now for this riddle, we're basically gonna have to go to Winterton, and this is there's a pretty cool Easter egg here that I wanted to mention. But I'm gonna teleport to my house. If you have a games necklace, teleport to Winterton with your games necklace. But as I said, I'm using my ornate jewelry box, and I'll go right here to a Winterton camp option number eight. Okay, so now we are making our way to a little area right here on the map, this little building. Um, and you just need to protect from melee when you go past the monsters, but also you need your fire bolt spell for this. If you go north here, you will find Ed, the creator of this quest. It's a nice little easter egg if you're interested in those sort of things. But take this little northern path here. You can check the map just to see exactly where you're going. And then go south here. And then pray melee. So for this you will probably need a little bit of food if you're a lower level, because you are going to be get attacked by an assassin. Um, so if you don't have food, you should have banked at the Winter Tot camp, and I apologize if you actually need food. Hopefully you don't, um, but I'll make sure that uh, I mention that the next time sooner. Um, but anyway, so for this part, you want to pray melee, and then you want to speak to Martin Holt. Pray melee, you're gonna get attacked by assassin. This assassin is pretty weak, so that's why I think you don't need food. He attacks you with melee, but sometimes he attacks you with a dart instead. I don't think anyone doing this quest is actually gonna need food, but if you do, I apologize once again. Make sure you grab enough food, like I'd say a few manta rays throughout this quest, just to make sure. Okay, so idea is we want to kill this assassin right now. Let's pray piety to kill him a little bit faster. As you can see, he dealt no damage to me. Perhaps he might deal a bit more damage to you. But there it is. After this, Martin Holt is going to speak to you straight away. Um, and you're just going to hold spacebar. And then you're going to click 4 on your earliest convenience. Okay, I'll have a look around. This is what you have to say. And then here is where the firebolt comes in clutch. You use the firebolt on the ice chunks just a little bit south of him. And then you search these ice chunks for another key, cold key this time around. You will use this cold key on this panel right here on the west side of this wall. Make sure you click that panel. And that is going to be yet another note and yet another riddle. Perfect. Now we're going to need to go to pub in Pissarilius. Uh, my best way to get there is to use the memoirs and teleport to Pissarilius. Option number two. If you have a different option to get here, once again, feel free to do it as you wish. We're running just a little bit south to this little pub. And uh, yeah, this took quite a little bit on the release, or let's say the first time around I did this. I'm doing this straight after I did the quest on my uh, Iron Man, and it took me 2 hours and like 40 minutes to finish it, but this should be a lot faster. Okay. After we're located here, let's speak to uh, Mr. Martin Holt over here once again. And then we're gonna once again use option number 4. This will be another part where I require you to have a notepad on the side or something that you will be able to write stuff in. And let's just say I'll have a look around. Climb this pillar right over here, um, a little bit west of the Martin. Climb it. And then north on the northern wall, there's gonna be a panel. Do not click off this panel, check it and write down all these little um, cities right here, because we'll need to do them in order, basically. So, I'm gonna quickly write down Pissarilius is my first one, then Lovacan, then Shazian, then Arceus, and then... No, actually... Oh yeah, um, pardon me, I missed it, my Hosidius is first. Uh, I thought it was just on this bottom row. My Hasidius is first, then Pissarilius, then Lovacan, then Shazian, and then Archaeus. There we go, that should be correct. I actually completely missed this Hasidius part. Lovely, once you have this all written down, it can take you a few seconds, uh, climb down the wall. And just a little bit east, we are gonna have all these different pillars, and we just have to push them in in the correct order. So first I'm gonna inspect the Hosidia statue, this is gonna be different for everyone most likely, and then just press it in. Press it in in the order that, um, that you had on that little panel. So my second one is Pissarilius, my third one is Lovacan, my fourth one is Shazian, And my fifth one, last one, is going to be Arceus. Okay, and now if I speak to Martin, that should be it. Uh, now we're gonna speak to Pil uh, pardon, we're gonna climb up the pillar, I completely forgot, and now we're gonna take uh, this actual panel out. 
there was no need to speak to Martin there, and that's going to uh, cause the cutscene. So at this point, we notice that our boy Martin is getting a little bit, uh, you know, we will be by ourselves for a little bit, let's say. So if, all, if you did everything correctly, this cutscene will start as soon as you unlock the panel. Uh, we're gonna uh, uh, we're gonna read the note here. Make sure an unlikely home is set by the sea in the shadow of the mountain. There you'll find me. So this part you will require a well you won't require it, but if you have a Mount Karun teleport, or you can also use the code C I R. Uh, that's what I'm gonna use because it gets you right there. Uh, but if you have the the other option, feel free to do that as well. So I'm using C I and R, and that's gonna teleport me just below the mountain. Lovely, and now we're gonna make our way to this little shack, uh, which is located just a little bit east, or is it west? This time is west, right? Um, west of the little teleport. Let's search the bed. Apologies for my east and west, sometimes I tend to really think about them, it's kinda hard for me. Um, but there we go, let's read this, another letter, another note, and then on this north uh, western corner, inspect these crates. And these crates, there's gonna be a trapdoor, climb through it. That's going to cause a very long cutscene. If you're interested in the lore, consider like reading through this cutscene. I've already read through it once, so I'm just holding spacebar. The next thing you're going to have to press is going to be option 3. And for the next part, we're going to go to mulch. That's where anti-poison comes in handy. Also, if there is any small mistakes, I apologize. Um, I'm not very... like very known for doing guides so to say but i'm doing my best to get this out as fast as possible and make it as good as possible i'm also going to include a notepad in the description if you perhaps prefer to read this um but i think we'll do just great Also, for the next part of the quest, there is going to be a, well, pretty big fight, right? So we will need to restock our supplies before we do. But let's say option number three, I'd better be off. You have a couple of options where you want to bank right now. I'm personally just going to go to a completely different bank um, and then teleport back to Fairy Ring. Uh, but you can also just run down and enter a farming guild if you want. So you can literally find any ways to bank. Uh, we're basically preparing for a fight right now. Uh, so I recommend you to have an antidote on you. You no longer need your firebolt spell, so you can bank those. I'm banking those real quick. You need one or two prayer potions. One combat potion is pretty nice. And then I'm just gonna grab a bunch of manta rays, even, and just leave two empty spaces for the items that we need to require. After you have all of that, let's return back to the CIR code and then run south. Here we go, C-I-R, that's gonna teleport me right next to the Mount Karulim. And now we need to run south. We're basically gonna go to this temple right here in Mulch. That's where our next place is located. Quickly check the quest guide just to make sure that's exactly where we gotta go. And yes, that is exactly where we gotta go. So, so far I haven't actually used any stamina potions, but that's because I have the little pool in the house and I quite often go there. Um, obviously, you might need to use a couple stamina potions if your stamina runs low. Make your way past the little bears. And then cross this bridge as soon as you enter it. At this point, you want to run east. And this is how you enter the Lizardman Temple. If you ever want to hunt for some dragon warhammers, this is probably a nice place to do it. Let's enter this place. Right here, we want to head east, and this is the door where the boss fight will be. We'll enter this later, but maybe we need to click it and hold spacebar. And now we need to speak to Kacht Balam, this little lizardy looking dude. And then select option number two. I have a question about the door over there. And basically, we're gonna have to go get some eggs for this guy, or one egg for this guy. So we're just holding spacebar here. And I'll show you exactly where the egg will be located as well. Lovely. So now we need to get him some eggs. 
perfect, that's the correct part. I'm gonna drink a stamina potion here, and we're gonna run west, all the way west, and then we're gonna jump in the strange hole. That's gonna put us back on the surface. If you're a lower level, consider playing range here, and if you get poisoned, con consider using an anti-poison. We are running to this place right here. Right here in this Cabo Swamp area, over that bridge is where we gotta go. That's where the eggs are located. So we are running basically west and south on every possible option. Okay, after you reach the bridge, cross it. This is where you're gonna get attacked by a lizard man. So um, it's a very easy fight. Um, and all you wanna do is search these eggs until you get attacked. There we go. Attack the lizard man brute and kill it. Well, I don't know if you even need to kill it, but you need to get the Lizardman egg. Make sure you have the Lizardman egg, search all the way around it, and find it. After you have it, we just have to return back to um, the guy we just spoke to in the temple. So that's where we're gonna run now. Okay, just making sure I have everything that I need for the next part here. And yeah, so this is basically, once again, I warn you, this is where the boss fight will happen. This is a little bit of a harder boss fight, but still not hard. Um, I recommend you to play Mage and Piety, Protect from Mage and Piety, that is. And uh, have Walk turned off, I mean, Run turned off, so you're walking. You can run, uh, but there's basically an an attack where you just need to kind of run, walk or run around. But you also need to dodge the little pools on the ground. I will explain as I do the fight, so if you're unsure, uh, make sure you are watching the fight first and then getting into it. So let's speak to him, we have the egg right here. So about the key, option number one. Okay, and now we have a damp key. With the damp key, you want to make your way right inside this door that's located in the wall. And click option yes. Once again, this is the boss fight. Make sure you are equipped in order to do it. Proceed north and click on the open gate. And now you're basically gonna see a little cutscene of Vios. Oh, well, I just spoiled you the quest, but it's the Vios and another dude talking. Apologies for the spoiler, but it's basically revealed right after the boss fight. But yeah, holding spacebar and prepare for the fight. Protect from magic, piety on. And basically, once you kill it, it kills you. That's all I'm gonna say for now. Um, so all you need to do is get its health bar to zero. This Xampur dude, very questionably looking ghost, is what we're gonna have to fight here. Also, sound on helps for this boss fight quite a bit. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have it off. There we go, Prey Mage is on and we're just gonna hit it. Uh, we're gonna combat pot as well. So there's a few things you need to worry about this fight. Do not step in the Mark of Darkness or you're gonna get corrupted. And when it spawns little hands, kill the hands. But when he starts doing a weird attack where it smacks you from the top floor, you just wanna run around and avoid Marks of Darkness. So the first attack is going to be the little hands. Oh, no, nah, apologies, that's not hands. See, this is where you wanna walk around. And if you have the sounds on, it actually alerts you when this happens. Unfortunately, I didn't, but this is where walk helps you. If you're running, it can be a little bit more chaotic. But once again, do not panic. Just click some food if you're taking damage and continue DPSing him down. Now, he hasn't attacked me with the hands yet, which is weird, perhaps because my fight is taking, like, I'm doing it too fast or something. Ah, there they are. These little hands is what you want to kill. I guess it's random, which would make the most sense. And you just want to whip it down. Or, well, if you're using other attacks, perhaps range probably works here as well, I would assume. I haven't tried it on my other account, I've also done it with melee. Uh, but melee seems to be working perfectly fine. I'm assuming his attack is gonna happen sometime soon, so I'm gonna get ready to move. Let's see if he does any special animations before it happens. Yep, he says this above his chat, that's when he starts dropping these little hands. Uh, it's a perfect cue for you to start walking back and forth. Just like Warcraft. Acid phase in Vorkaf is exactly the same as this. And once that stops, you make sure you hit it, and that's gonna be basically the boss fight completed. But as I said, it's never really completed. He kills you right as you kill him, but that's a part of the quest. Do not worry, that is a safe death. If you're a hardcore, you're chilling here. Can't believe half an hour is already gone with this recording. Time flies when you make guides, I guess. 
uh, but little lizardmans check you out and they're like hey no what up this dude's a zombie we're running away in this room you have a simple job and that is to search the table on the north part of the room and you get this little thing make sure you read it and now we need to basically go to the to the commander again i think so we're gonna teleport to house we're gonna replenish our stats and we're gonna teleport to CIR again and we're gonna have to go back to that check, back to that little trapdoor. Run on now to speed up the quest, obviously. And we're kind of close to completing the quest here, but not quite. There's still a little bit ahead of us, but not too much. There's a lot of running and teleporting and different stuff like that. Uh, but inspect the crates, you're gonna get put into another cutscene. And now, in my opinion, the quest becomes a little bit annoying because you kind of have to just constantly go back and forth between people. Uh, but we kind of have to push through it. Also, it is pretty worth to complete this quest. A lot of new spells will be unlocked. And I'm going to do a separate video showcasing all the spells, basically. Alright, that was the cutscene. And now we're going to quickly make sure that we are on the right track with our quest. And then we're going to have to speak to five leaders of different uh, cities. And I'm gonna go down the list, but you can take it whichever way you want. I'll just take the one that I did and I think is the most... I mean, everything is literally the same. Uh, but once again, for this part is where the Xeric Talisman is crucial. Or the memoirs. Either one or the other. Very helpful to have. Okay, once again, we are hoarding... Ho hoarding. <laughs> holding spacebar. And let's quickly make sure we're at the right point. There we go. We are. Okay, first off, we are going to teleport to CIS and speak to Lord Arceus. He's going to be located in the tower. So let's configure this and go to CIS. After getting here, running south is where we're going to have to go. And we're basically making our way to this um, big little building right here. Slightly, what is this, west of the library. This, uh, I don't even know what... Uh, what it's not a square, it's like a, I don't know what, what this is called, but that's where we're going. Let's open the door, this little tower. And let's climb up the stairs. This is where we are going to find Lord Arceus. Speak to Lord Ar... Uh, where is he? Lord Trobin Arceus. And hold spacebar. Make sure you check the quest and make sure that he is scratched out before you proceed. The next one we're going to Lord Hesidius. I have a Xaric Talisman in my house. And we're gonna teleport to Glade. So that's where we're going next. So teleport menu. We're gonna click Glade. And now we are running east into his building. You should be located on the bottom floor if I remember correctly. Lord Kandur Hosidius. Speak to him. Hold spacebar. Next person we're speaking to is um, Lady Lovaken. Uh, make sure this is crossed off. It is. Teleport to house. And then teleport to Inferno next. This is where I wish I didn't have this in my house, by the way. And I just had it in my inventory. It would make this quite a little bit faster, actually. Probably like a whole minute at the end of the quest, I think I could save if I just had a Xeric amulet. And we just run south here and we're basically making our way to this quest start location, just a little bit south and just a little bit west. And that's where we gotta go. I'm gonna have a sip of water, I'm almost running out. Let's just say I'm not very used to speaking that much, but it's okay. We're gonna open the door and we're gonna speak to Lady Vulcana Lovaken. I didn't open the door. Next person we're gonna have to speak to is Lady Pisarilius. She is located, you guessed it, in Pisarilius, and you have to go in the manhole for her. I teleport with memoirs to Pisarilius, second option, and we run west. Climb down the manhole and then run east. So make sure you check your quest every now and then to see you're on the correct track. Drink a stamina potion if you have to. Speak to Lady Pisarilius in her tent after going through it. Just like so. Speak to her. 
On my Ironman, I had to speak to her twice because I didn't claim rewards on my other, uh, well, on my other quest. So I'm gonna speak to her again just in case. Check that everything is crossed. Yes, it is. And now we need to make our way to, um, well, Shazian. Now the best way to get there is to say DJR on the ferry ring. So that's what I'm gonna do. Configure this DJR. That's Chasm of Fire teleport. We're gonna use this one a couple of times throughout this video. Okay, after uh, some research, because my brain farted, uh, we need to just go a little bit um, east over here. And this is the tent we gotta get to, to speak to the Lord Shazian. Uh... Okay, after you enter this tent, my brain is really going mushy right now. Climb up this ladder, and that's where the Lord Shazian is located. Apologies, them moving around the whole area confused me a little bit. But there it is, Lord Shiro Shazian is the last person we gotta speak to. And if we quickly check our journal, we spoke to all of them. Now we need to go to Xeric Lookout. And once again, I need to go to my house to do that. Uh, the option number one on your Xeric Talisman is where we gotta go next. Okay. So, we go here, we go Teleport Menu, and we select option number one. Now we're gonna have to speak to RK, oh actually pardon me, we have to go inside and speak to Fulor. That's the first thing we gotta do. This this part is a little bit weird, but we're gonna have to go through it. But now we're kind of almost done, uh, once we're done speaking to all of these and doing them favors and whatnot. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. Hold spacebar throughout this conversation. All this conversation takes a while, but if you're interested in the lore, they are um, they're very good. Lovely. Okay, after that cutscene, you're gonna continue your conversation with Fulor, and then you're gonna say more options and say I'd better get going. Option number three on the second screen. Head east a little bit and speak to Lord Throbin Arceus just outside the lookout. And now we basically need to help them all again, kind of. Um, it's like a mini one small favor for every single NPC, um, but hold spacebar. For the next part, we're gonna have to make our way to Mount Karul. And we're gonna need a Defense Potion 3 and we're gonna need a Volcanic Sulfur. So make sure you have that. If not, I show it in the beginning how to get it. Very simple to get, but this is what you need next. Make your way to Mount Karul. My best way is Rada's Blessing, but you can also consider taking a Fairy Ring, uh, just like we did last time. And make your way down the elevator. And now we're gonna have to speak to Kal. So this, either one of these three people is who we talk to next. So since we already have these parts in our inventory, this is gonna make this step extremely fast. If you didn't, then you can just go ahead and do it now, basically. After this conversation, we will be using the defense potion on the Volcanic Surfer. Make sure you use it and you don't drink it. You can also just left click on the Volcanic Sulfur and then use it on a potion. Um, and then uh, say the second option, Sulfur in a defense potion, got it, I will be back soon. And then use the Volcanic Sulfur on the defense potion to create a Sulfur potion. Speak to the Khan again. And after they enchant it into a shielding potion, make your way to Winterthod. Uh, I'm gonna go to my house and teleport to Winterthod that way. I'm gonna use a ornate jewelry box, just like before. Teleport to Winterthod. And now we have to right click on the potion and click use on the doors of Din. The Winterthod doors, make sure you use the shielding potion on it. There we go. And uh, Ignisia talks to you, but that's all we had to do. And now we basically have to return to Xeric Lookout. So this is the first out of five mini quests that we have to do inside this quest. So let's make our way once again to the Lookout. And let's speak to the Arceus. And that should be the first part completed.
If you click the kingdom divided, one will be crossed off. Perfect. Make your way inside the lookout and go down the ladder on the south part of this room. And here we're going to speak to Lord Hasidius himself. And we're going to do a little mini quest for him as well. For the next part, we're going to have to kill a level 91 barbarian. All you need to do is protect from melee to kill it, or if you don't have the, just smack it. Uh, we are going to go to the Kurand Woodland. I'll show you on the map where that is, just in case you do not have the Radha's Blessing. This is right over here. A few extra options to get here would be to teleport to a Woodcutting Guild, or just run south, honestly. So we are getting to this little dungeon, the Barbarian Dungeon, that's where we're going to. It's located just a little bit east, and then a little bit south. And that's where we're going. Climb down this ladder. And this is where we get attacked by Barbarian Warlord. Protect from melee if you have to. And just smack it down. After this we go through a little conversation. Speak to the Phileas Remore, hold spacebar, and then return to the lookout with your Xeric Talisman. Just to make sure that's exactly what we gotta do, yes. Teleport to house. And then slowly make our way to the lookout, just like so. Climb downstairs yet again. And speak to Hasidius. Check the quest log, make sure that's also crossed off. And now we're gonna have to go upstairs. Upstairs on the first floor, speak to Lord Chio Shazian. And now we're gonna have to make our way to Glade, basically. Apologies for the burp, had a bit of sip of water right there. Um, but yeah, speak to him, long conversation yet again. And now we need to make our way to Glade. Once again, second option on the Gezeric Stalisman is where you gotta go. Just like so. And now we're making our way to Vineyard. Vineyard is located a little bit um, east. And a little bit south is where we're gonna have to go. So right here in this little vineyard area. Enter it and inspect the wine barrel south of the vineyard. Click option number one. And now pick lock the chest. This is where the thieving requirement comes in handy. Apparently I failed to pick look at it. There we go. Uh, read the Shazian journal. And then make your way back to lookout, I believe. Okay, three out of five completed. We're almost there. Well, not yet. We need to still speak to him. Option number one on the Xeric Talisman, as always. Make your way upstairs to the first floor. And yet again, speak to Shazian. Just to make sure for your safety, make sure that this is also crossed off. Now we go upstairs one more time and we're gonna speak to Lady Lovaken. After you speak to Lady Lovaken, make sure you climb down. This is what I did, a pretty big mistake last time around. Climb down twice and speak to Commander before you continue on with the place where we have to go next. I need some help with Lady Lovaken, is what you have to ask. And that is what we had to do. And now we teleport to DJR. Just make sure, check your quest log, make sure it says that you need to go to prison in Shazian. Um, because this is where I did one of my mistakes. Teleport to DJR. And then from that port, and then from that point, just run south until you reach the prison. 
The prison is located uh, right here west of Shazian. It's li this little dungeon sign that shows you exactly what it is. Here's a cool little training spot for any Deadman mode enthusiasts. Here is where a lot of hill giants are located in singles area. Perhaps an interesting training spot for something like a Deadman mode. Um, and there's some extra little monsters and whatnot very nearby. So a cool little area, I think. The, the, the whole Zia, um, they've added a bunch of little NPCs. So if you're a lower level, I think it's a pretty pretty nice place to train, you know, honestly. Um, so definitely considering some of the options for when I play Deadman mode. But anyways, once you make it to prison, climb down the staircase. And then open this gate if they're closed and run south. Speak to Martin, but pay attention here in this conversation because you will need to uh, remember the phrase. There's free food and bed. Can you believe it? Luxury. Okay, never mind. That's not it. And then, of course, run business. As you can see I'm a little. Okay, that's not it. Excellent work. For a moment I met you and you. Okay, no, that's also not it. No, not it yet. I'm taking my time. Aha, there it is. Evil only triumphs when the good do nothing. That is the catchphrase. It was same on my other account. Um, so just remember it. Evil only triumphs when the good do nothing. That's what you gotta remember. Okay, now we're making our way to the graveyard. The quest is almost completed, so stay with me here. Keep grinding. It's gonna be worth it. Make your way um, east here. And this is where the graveyard is located. Once again, we're gonna be fighting a little assassin. Pray melee, and that's all you gotta do. Speak to Jora over here south of the church. Um, and say the correct phrase. For me, it was evil only triumphs. When the good do nothing. Option number two was for me. Could be different for you. Just pay attention there. And you're gonna get attacked by an assassin here anytime soon. Pray melee, pray piety. Smack it down. Shouldn't hit you at all, but if it does... You should have some extra food in your inventory. I'm not gonna divine pot for this. It's not worth the money. Okay. Just like so. One more hit. It, it just stopped attacking me. Alright, well, it didn't even attack me. Uh, but let's speak to Jora after we defeat the assassin. I have to do it again! Okay, I got scammed. If you get scammed like me, let me know in the comments. I legit have to do the fight twice. How is that fair? That is not fair. Anyways, I'll just back it down again. Hmm. Interesting. I don't think that was supposed to happen. But I'm actually interested, if you made it this far in the video, to how many of you guys this has happened. And there it is. Now you're dead. And uh, Jorah should speak to you automatically. You should receive a declaration that you can read. And you have an official declaration. Lovely. That's what we needed. Let's return to the second floor of the lookout. Once again, Xeric Stalisman, option number one. Teleport to lookout. I have to do it the long way. Annoying. There we go. Go to the second floor. One and two, speak to her, and that should be it. Declaration should be removed from your inventory. And we're gonna quickly just make sure that this part is also completed. The last over here is Lady Pisarilius on the top floor. Make sure you speak to her. This time we are gonna use Karadet's memoirs to make it a little bit faster as soon as we are done with this conversation. Hold spacebar is the name of this quest. If you're not interested in the lore. Okay, almost done. Come on. Lovely. Uh, Remini is the Karadet's memoirs. And make your way to Arceus. For this part you need the Dark Essence block and Molten Glass. Um, but if you followed me, you already have that prepared. And we're making our way to Altar right now. So just run north. Lovely. Climb up these stairs right here. Then run all the way around and then climb another set of stairs right here in the back. Speak to Mori that's located a little bit north of the stairs. 
and she will tell you, yo dude, get me Dark Essence block and Molten Glass. If you can imagine doing this on release, you would have to go all the way back, obtain these two items and then come all the way back here. Luckily you have this quest guide and we already give her the items and we obtain the Dark Nullifier. We're almost at the end of the quest here, so stay strong. Teleport to DJR, we are going to Chasm of Fire next. You will require a Dark Nullifier for that. I'm gonna restore my stats here on my pool and I'm gonna teleport to DJR. It's not easy to keep focus after one hour of talking, but let's stay strong and make our way over here west to the Chasm of Fire and enter the Chasm. You're not actually gonna enter it by the way, you're gonna start a cutscene or a conversation with the Disciple of Yama. And that's basically all, all we had to do there. So now we got yeeted somewhere into Narnia. I don't know where that is. Um, okay, lovely. And now we basically just need to return to Lady of Pisarilius, Xeric Talisman, option number one. So you see how if you do not have Xeric's amulet, this quest would be so fucking annoying to do, honestly. Like, I wouldn't want to recommend anyone doing this quest without the Xeric Talisman. Um, climb to the top of the lookout for, I believe, the last time. There we go. Speak to Lady Pisarelius. And after that, we after that we are speaking to Commander on the bottom floor. Make sure this is all done. Lovely. Let's go down. Go downstairs. Just like so. And speak to Commander Fulor. And this will be a long cutscene. Here we realize that the Counselor Ornson is, uh, well, yeah, he did not commit anything nice, let's say. But this will be a long little cutscene where you just hold your spacebar, you sip your water, and you enjoy the fact that you've just completed a fairly long old school RuneScape quest, thanks to a quest guide that is probably not optimally made. But um, if I helped any of you guys with this quest, um, please consider giving it a like and a comment. Um, you know, if it was bad, do let me know. Yo, dude, your quest was shit. Uh, but if it was alright, please do let me know as well. This took me, as I said, four hours to originally do, and then, you know, this extra hour to redo on this account and make it as good as I possibly could on the release day. Anyways, after this is done, let's check our quest journal. Um, I should speak to Hasidius downstairs. So let's climb down the ladder and speak to our boy, Lord Hasidius. And once again, we're holding spacebar. You guessed it. Um, but I believe that this will be it? No, I think we need to speak to Commander one more time after this conversation. That's gonna be it. So... Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you exactly what happens here because... Uh, yeah, I want you to experience for yourself. But let's speak to Commander Fulor one more time. Click option number one for the last time. When you get the ability to do it, let's do this. And there we go. I'm gonna enjoy my glass of water after an hour of conversating. And here is what happens. Fun fact, if you made it this far in the video, I've done two mistakes in this video. I'll do my best with the power of editing to get rid of them. Uh, but if you spotted them, let me know in the comments. I'm interested if anyone noticed where my mistake was made. Uh, but yeah, this is where shits get serious. Andrews gets smacked in the head by uh, our homie guard over here. Bonk, just like that. And now for the biggest plot twist of the century. We have to wait a little bit for it. Okay, massive feast for our brand new king. Which, if you could tell from this fast questing, is our homie Lord Hosidius, right? I believe. 
There is King Kandur, Hosidius is his name. But wait, that is not all. We're speaking to Fulor still. So this is just like a massive spacebar angle right here. That's all you gotta do. And then, uh, yeah, this is, this is the end of the quest, basically nothing else to put here. Uh, but yeah, I do hope I could, uh, you know, help someone's day by uh, showing them how to do this quest. I did quite enjoy doing it on the release, by the way, not knowing where to go, writing down all the little steps that you figure out as you go along. Um, I think I'll do that for the future quests as well. It's just an enjoyable way of doing them. And obviously the quest guide can help some people out as well. But here it is. The mass... Th this is the build-up. This is what we have been waiting for. Look at us. We are talking. Amazing. And now, I turn away. But guess what? That is not it. Here it... Oh, and there's a knife in his back. Just like that, an assassin got him. It is an absolute disaster. And he's gone. So yeah, just like that, the quest ends. Takes us a very long blank screen and one more conversation with Fulor for us to finish this quest. Alright, lovely. So for the quest rewards, you get two quest points, the Book of the Dead, Antique Lamp, and Current Castle Respawn points, but also additional Archaea spells. This video is already an hour long because of the guide, so I am going to do another video where I will showcase every single Archaea spell. I'll start working on this sometime soon, I'll try to get it out as fast as I possibly can, but I really, really hope this video helps some of you guys out. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I will see you all again uh, with another video very, very soon. Stay safe and enjoy your Questcape, if that was what you needed for Questcape. Anyways, thank you for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.